Hello fellow artists and art enjoyers. My name is Will, also known as Wilder Art, and today we are drawing 65 hands. Fun fact, this was originally supposed to be the 100 hands drawing challenge, but we will get to why it isn't in a moment. The plan was to do 10 drawings in the morning, 10 in the afternoon for 5 days. I felt like my hand drawings had been lacking recently, so I wanted to improve my ability to draw hands, plus also stylizing them. I'll also share with you how to adjust this challenge to fit your needs. So stay tuned. For this challenge, I structured the 5 days in a way that I think would be most beneficial to me. Day 1 is anatomy and basic references. Day 2 is hands holding something and different kind of hand shapes. Day 3 is extreme poses. Day 4 is taking inspiration from other artists with reference pictures and imagination. And day 5 is stylized and imagination. So let's get right into it. Day 1, anatomy and references. Let's take a really quick detour into anatomy. I promise you this won't get too complicated because we are not biologists. At least most of us. So very first thing in day 1 I did was look up anatomical references for hands. So I could try to understand the basic anatomy of a hand before I even sat down to draw. I mainly wanted to understand bones and where they sit under the skin as well as the main muscles of the hand. A couple of things I discovered during this phase. The knuckles are actually the end of bones in the middle part of the hand. And actually those little dips and valleys that happen when you really like flex your fingers. Those are not bones, those are actually the tendons that go up to the fingers. Also, knuckles are way more in the middle of the hand than I often think they are. Now in the reference pictures I'm using, which are mostly my own hands, my fingers are very slim so you can actually see the bones quite well. And another interesting fact to note is that the bones in your fingers actually sit at the back side of your finger. So that leaves kind of a soft space on the palm side of your fingers to bend them properly. Now, for the actual drawings, I started out with basic proportions from the book Human Anatomy for Artists, The Elements of Form by Elliot Goldfinger. I haven't looked at this book too much, but it seems very cool, so I think I will use it for more anatomy stuff in the future. If you run into difficulty later trying to draw bones from imagination, honestly it's quite hard to do it correctly, but they also don't have to be super accurate. After all, they're going to be covered up pretty much entirely. It's just good to know the basic placement to understand where they protrude and where they vanish under muscles, etc. And at that point in the time lapse, I started to realize how much time I was taking on these drawings and proceeded to stress myself. I pushed through until 8, felt dizzy and kinda headachy, so I stopped and went to make lunch to think. I really wanted to do this challenge, but I also have other things to do and I didn't want this to take up too much time. And on the flip side, I also didn't want to rush it. So here's a very important thing about this challenge. You need to pick the right difficulty for yourself. If you do a one hand a day for five days challenge, but you're an experienced artist, you probably won't learn that much because it's already kind of easy. But if you're barely drawing at all and you want to do a hundred hands a day, chances are you will be too stressed to pay attention to what you're doing and burn yourself out. So what I settled with was instead of doing 20 hands a day, I settled on 13 hands a day, which is still challenging for me, but doesn't take up my time to a point where I would have to stress about it. And once that decision was made, I got back to drawing. I worked on fists, which usually is quite difficult for me to get them to look like they have weight and substance from imagination, but I would say I'm definitely quite good at copying from pictures. Now, another problem I had during this challenge was looking back and forth between the references in the drawing can get really dizzying. I wonder if you guys have experienced something like that. Though it seems to depend on the day for me because in the later days it was actually fine. Now, knowing that I only had to do 13 hands that day and not 20, it was much more chill and actually went by quite smoothly. Moving on to day two, which is about different hand types and hands holding things. For this, I asked some family members and a friend if I could use their hands as drawing references, since I only have two hands and they look fairly similar to each other. 
Now, I like using my own hands as references, but this isn't ideal if I want to draw characters that are more heavy set or have more chunky hands because I have very kind of like slim and spiny hands. So I wanted to see how different hand types could look. On that day, I really noticed the tendency to judge what I'm drawing and feeling like it's not accurate enough. So my perfectionism was kicking in pretty hard. I tried to remind myself that it doesn't matter to make this perfect because these are literally just sketches to learn from. The entire goal is to learn, not to be perfect. You don't need to push yourself. Honestly, that kind of ruins the experience and, and probably will leave you feeling bad about whatever you're doing. So try to find a little piece of joy in what you do, a little spark, something that makes you happy. Once I drew some different hand types, I went on to drawing hands holding stuff. The brush pose was really cool and I think I managed drawing that one pretty well, but the phone though? I don't know why, but I hate drawing phones and hands holding phones. Although in hindsight, I think I did a pretty good job. I was just being hard on myself. It's really difficult for me to not be perfectionistic about every goddamn thing. Day three, extreme poses. I think it's really fun to draw kind of more funky poses, but at the same time, it's really challenging to get the proportions right. 28 and 31 were obviously not connected in the reference pictures, but the opportunity was there, so I took it. Sometimes you gotta have a little bit of fun with this. I was also trying to slow myself down a little in order to get cleaner shapes. Ironically enough, once I managed to not focus on rushing through, drawing went much smoother and pretty quick too. I also love the poses for this one. I love when hands are doing the grabby or when you can see kind of the knuckles and tendons on the hand. I just love this intense vibe. And then I also am using some reference pictures with a flintlock replica that I got for Christmas. It's so perfect for rough picks. These ones are so cool, honestly. At that point in time, I was already halfway done. I felt really proud that I stuck with this challenge, but also that I lowered the amount of hands to draw so I could feel less stressed about it. Before we move on to day 4, if you've been watching so far, do you like the references I made? Do you now feel inspired to draw hands as well? Because if so, I'm making all of my own hand reference pictures available to you. I'll leave the link down in the description. You can just download the hands from Google Drive, I promise you there's no viruses included. And feel free to send me the pictures you draw with them. Also, if you've enjoyed the video so far, if it has been helpful or entertaining to you, it would mean a lot to me if you could like the video to show your support. Thank you so much for leaving a like. Alright, day 4. Imagination plus artist reference pictures. This was actually way harder to do than I thought, for two reasons. First of all, I didn't look up the references previously, so I had to find artists who draw hands really well on the fly. I scrolled through Twitter for ages, only to find that it's super hard to find artists who draw hands in a way that's inspiring to me. And then I also got a headache from scrolling, but in the end I still managed to put together a couple of references. For this first part of day 4, the references are taken from these artists right here. The second reason this was kind of tough, trying to adapt an artist's style instead of drawing straight from the reference images is just way harder to me. It tends to look kind of wonky, but I wonder if the outcome would have been better if I fleshed out the sketch more. A lot of the artists I picked are heavily shape-based and maybe that's why I had more trouble with that. I then tried to do a couple hands in Nicogeny's hand style, which is very much based on squares and triangles with squares that get slimmer on one end, which looks really satisfying. But honestly, pretty hard to emulate. So far, this is my least favorite of all the pages because it just looks wonky and I honestly don't know what I'm doing there. The second part of day four, I absolutely speedrun because I had a headache pretty much all day, just came back from shopping and had like two more hours until we would watch a show with my friends. I almost did the same mistake as I did earlier when I tried to find hand artists. 
where I was scrolling through Twitter that gave me the headache in the first place. In the end, I just decided to go with one artist so I didn't get the headache back. Nips draws very loose and flowy, but shapey. It feels very intentional, especially if you've ever watched them draw. I kind of try to embody that, but also put speed into it because again, limited time for that one. It really wasn't easy to do either, but it worked better than before and I actually got it done pretty quick. So that's an improvement. Now, the last day, day five. Finishing off with imagination slash my own style. When drawing hands, it's always difficult to come up with more complex poses from just memory and still make them look solid and believable. I also kind of cheated my way out of this one a bit because for one or two hands, I actually looked at my own hands while drawing, but who cares. Day five, I absolutely breezed through again and it was pretty fun. While I was doing the drawings, I was actually listening to a podcast which helped me not stress because my mind was engaged with something else. So if you've encountered similar problems, try listening to something. I definitely learned some things about hands that I can use now, like the fingernail area, for example, or the thumb. I don't know, the kind of general shapes that happen there are a little bit ingrained into my brain now. Also, how the palm of the hand kind of squishes together. And because day five went by so smoothly, I managed to finish all of the day five drawings in one sitting. So that meant I had the rest of the day free. Coming to the conclusion. Honestly, it felt so weird when it was over. It totally did not feel like I drew 65 hands in a week, but I did. It was a very interesting experience, honestly. Though if I did this again, I would set the goals even lower and spend more time on each hand. I think you don't learn as much as you expect from the amount of work I put in. So I would recommend maybe even just doing a couple studies and really focusing on each one to learn as much as possible from them instead of rushing. All right, all that said, if you want to do this challenge or even just want to draw a couple of hands and share them, come join our Discord. We have a ton of artists there, lots of friendly people to help you out and chill with. Now, if you like listening to me rambling about stuff, want to learn more about my art process, or just need a video to watch in the background as you practice drawing hands, here's a video where I work on a character reference sheet commission. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Will out. <laughs>